What's up gearheads? Welcome back to Hammerhead Gearhead. As you can see, I am so excited for this episode today. So Noel Guevara here and this is part two, two of two of what's in my camera bag. The first one, you can check it out here. It was all about what's in my commuter camera carry. So the idea behind that is I was illustrating what I would bring as I would go around the city to run errands or you know to make some very, very short trips within the confines of a lockdown and quarantine. For part two, we are looking at what's inside my theoretical travel bag. I say theoretical because we're not gonna go anywhere anytime soon. Well, at least for me, Probably my earliest trip will be midway through next year. It's really sad, but a lot of people have been asking me about this though, what I would bring if I actually went out on the trip. So here we are. So please like this video, subscribe, and smash that notification bell. Let's go. Looking at my gear laid out like this somewhat triggers my anxiety. I'm sure you guys are feeling what I'm feeling. I've been itching to travel for so long. Because of the quarantine, I can't do that. But in as much as I'm thriving during the lockdown because I'm an introvert, I've been very productive, I still need my dose of the great outdoors. So, wow, this is, uh, this is something, something, something else. Now, a bit of caveat or context. This is what I would bring on a personal trip, not on a project or an assignment. What I would classify as a personal trip would be, I'm based in Manila, so that would be a trip to Hong Kong or Singapore or somewhere around the Philippines. So assuming though that there will be a side trip for a photo opportunity. So I still have to be prepared for that. So let's get started with the heart of the kit, which is the camera. The most important part of the kit is of course the camera. So I would bring my go-to would be a Nikon Z7 mirrorless camera. So why a mirrorless and not a DSLR? I could go through all the reasons, but mainly it's lighter, it's more compact, and it's more versatile. I can shoot photo and video really, really easily. So I have here my Z7. There you go. And you can see attached to it is an RRS L-plate kit and also a Peak Design clutch. So this is my default configuration for this camera. It's very comfortable, it's very light, and it's secure. And I have an L-plate so I can just connect this to a tripod when I need to. Now, if I wanted to shoot video, I would bring a Nikon Z6. If I wanted a more compact setup, I would bring a Nikon Z50 with a 16 to 50 lens. So one thing I want you guys to understand, and I guess it's sort of a tip, is that make the decision whether you're going to shoot photo or video for a trip. I know you can come home with both. I know you can do both, photo and video. But if it's a short trip, I would say make the decision before that. Because if you decide to shoot photo, and video at the same time, you can come home with great images and great video clips. But based on experience, the quality is much better and much higher if you make the decision beforehand. So it has to be a conscious decision. It's a hard decision, but it has to be a conscious decision. If you want to learn more about the Nikon Z7, click here for my honest one-year field review. I'm a minimalist when it comes to packing lenses. So for personal trips, I normally bring just one or a maximum of two. So right here, you see the FTZ adapter and my favorite, the Nikkor 50mm 1.4G. So you may be asking, why are you bringing just one lens? Well, based on experience, after looking through my portfolio, having just one lens actually gives me more take-home photos as opposed to having a set of lenses. I realized that I spend more time trying to decide which lens I'm going to use and I waste time changing lenses. I miss a lot of shots. As opposed to having just one lens, you're ready to fire and it's a good exercise for you to master the focal length that you have, especially if it's your favorite focal length, and it flexes your imagination. So having one lens has a lot of advantages as opposed to what you would think would be disadvantages. That said, the thinking behind this kit is that I'm just going to Singapore or Hong Kong where it's mostly street photography, some portraits. So an all around 50 mm would be great. To supplement it, I would probably bring a 14 to 30 f4 if I feel like there's more angle of view that's needed, let's say landscape, or 
if I just wanted one lens and I wanted the versatility, I would go for a 24 to 70 f4 z as well. So these z lenses are great. The only time that I will bring a 70 to 200 is if there's a specific need for it. Let's say birds or let's say whale watching. So I would bring that lens, that humongous lens, but I would leave it in the luggage in the hotel and I'll only bring it on those specific days that I will be using it. But otherwise, it's just really too heavy to, to lug around, right? So a 50mm or a 24 to 70 would be perfect as your all-around lens, walk-around lens. Right beside my lens is my MH25A battery charger, so you can't leave home without that. And beneath all of these would be my think tank cases. And this one is the Pixel Pocket Rocket memory card holder. This is kind of old. I got this back in 2014, I think. And originally, this was for CF cards. But now I've repurposed it for XQD cards. And then beside it, similarly as old, is my Think Tank 4 Pocket DSLR battery holder. Right here. It holds an assortment of NL15 A and B batteries. So one thing I love about my system is that I went from a Nikon D800 to a Nikon D850, then a D500, and then the Nikon Z. So it wasn't much of a pain to upgrade because I was using the same batteries, for example. So the NL15, so I didn't have to buy a new pocket for the batteries or a new charger so I could keep on using some of the old accessories that I had. Next up is my Adorama Slinger filter holder. So for landscape photography, I got the Nisi Advanced Filter Kit. So it comes with an assortment of ND filters, graduated NDs, polarizers, and a bunch of accessories, but it's just too bulky to bring around. Now, I took the advice of Chris Maxino, who is a Nikon ambassador and is an award-winning, inter from international competitions, award-winning landscape photographer. And he told me, just bring select items for your travel kit. So here, I have the filter holder, I have the polarizer, the circular polarizer, the 6-top and 10-top ND, and a graduated ND. So this is a smaller kit, basically the select items, and it's perfect for travel. Up next, let me bring them out. Here is my Vortex Media Storm Jacket camera cover. This is really inexpensive, around $35, and it's essentially a raincoat for your camera and I just bring this for emergencies the Nikon Z7 is weatherproofed already as it is but I just like bring this along and it comes in camouflage also and it folds up really small like this and it comes with a clip that you can hook on a d-ring so it's good to have in case of emergencies when the rain is a bit too strong. So it's also inexpensive, like I said. So if you can't afford the Think Tank version of the camera covers, I think they're, they're really, really expensive. This is a good alternative for that. Up next, right here, is my cleaning kit. It's just an assortment of accessories for cleaning, maintenance. So the blower and lens cloths, they're all in this Peak Design patch. Another essential piece of the kit is the tripod. And not just any tripod, but the best travel tripod there is. And this is the Peak Design Aluminum Travel Tripod. So I did a review on this, click the link here. So it's amazing because it's compact and it's light and it's no taller than three soda cans stacked and no thicker as well, as you can see here. So no wasted space. That is the thinking behind the development of this tripod. So it fits snug in the backpack, which I will show you later. So amazing, amazing product. Right underneath my tripod is my MacBook Pro 13 inch. This I believe is a 2019 model. It's not the latest one, it's the one before that. And it's in a black case with stickers from my sponsors, Columbia and 22 degrees and a host of others that I'm a fan of. So Swim with Sharks, 
cape clasp, and so on. The most peculiar thing that you've noticed, I'm sure, would be these two Velcro strips right here. So these are actually for my hard drives. So I bring two hard drives all the time. So one is the main one and another that is backup. And right underneath them, so these are the C hard drives, are Velcros as well. So I learned this trick or tip from Morton Hilmer, who is also a wildlife photographer and a content creator here on YouTube. And so this fits perfectly right here. So I can have it connected to my MacBook Pro. And if I have to move around, I have, don't have to detach or carry it separately. And it lessens the chances or the risks of it detaching while transferring. Plus it's perfect for working on boats and airplanes. So when you have that small table in front of you, this saves on space. And it's also very easy to detach. At the bottom left is my Peak Design Tech pouch. So I've also done a review on this and you could click the link here to watch that video. But this is an essential part of my kit. So you can see here all the accessories that I need for the computer end of the kit itself. So you have my card readers, CF, XQD, and also the power blocks and chargers, earphones, pens, power bank as well, and other adapters, let's say for HDMI. So this has been a great addition to all my carries or camera bags. It also has two loops here for Peak Design anchors that I could attach a sling to, so I could carry it separately if I needed to. So this has been an indispensable part of any of my kits. On to the more personal stuff of the kit. So I always bring this carabiner. This is from Blackhawk from my airsoft days. So I always use it. This is very handy. Let's say for one, if you have a lot of shopping bags, you can just put them all here and then you can carry it like so. And if I just need to attach something to my bag temporarily, so I could use this. To store it, I normally put it here at the top of my flask. So this is from Clean Canteen. And it's very unobtrusive. It also makes it a lot easier to rotate the cap on and off and on again. Last but not the least is my Matador Daylight 16. And it is a packable backpack. So one of the things that you would read in travel articles essential tips and tricks is to always bring an extra bag, right? So I bring this normally for two things. One is I bought additional stuff and it doesn't fit in my backpack or I'm going over the allotted carry allowance, carry on allowance, or if I'm going shopping and I don't want to use plastic bags. So I just ask them to put it here. It's overkill for that, I know, but it's really great, you know, for for those purposes. So you just pull it out of the bag. There you go. And there it is. It's made of cordura material as well. And you have pockets for, let's say, a flask. There you go. Look how slim and compact that is. Neat, huh? So where does this all go? It all goes into this Peak Design Everyday Backpack Zip 20 liters. For comparison, this is what I was using before. It's a 30 liter version of the version one of the Everyday Backpack and it has a flap. When I was using this, it has served me well I was concerned over the flap because one, it meant that it wasn't completely weatherproof. And second, for security, I had to have a special lock here just to keep it safe. So when this came out, I instantly went for it, even if I knew that it was 10 liters less in terms of capacity and it has less flexifold dividers. But it's a great, great backpack for the type of shooting that I do, plus, the reduced capacity has taught me to be more economical and practical with the gear that I bring. 
And there you have it. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave them in the comment section below. If you want to purchase any of these items, I've listed down everything in the description box as Amazon affiliate links. So please use those so I can have some support for my show. You can also visit me on Instagram for more of my work, Noel Guevara Photo. That's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.